Hello and welcome to a brand new b and Geek toy review. In today's episode, we're looking at the brand new B&M exclusive Doctor Who, Fourth Doctor and Giant Robot set. Stay tuned. Experimental prototype robot K1. Welcome back to the channel. Now, I hadn't expected to see this in B&M stores for quite a few weeks, uh, given that we're only in uh, virtually the second week of February, and they were told um, that this was going to not be in stores till about mid-February, probably like late February. And obviously, as um, with the previous waves that we've had, they have been delayed significantly due to like various uh, logistic issues. So I really wasn't expecting this when I went into my local B&M uh, earlier today to do a bit of shopping on my day off. Um, but lo and behold, here it is, the robot collector figure set. Um, now this is obviously a re-release of two figures that were previously available, which we'll do a comparison on um, later on in the video. Now, um, this is made up of obviously the K1 robot, and also Tom Baker's Fourth Doctor from his very first story, Robot, which first aired on the 29th of December 1974, is when the first episode of this four-part story went out. Written by Terence Dix, who was the outgoing script editor, and produced and directed by Barry Letts, who was the outgoing producer before the new team of Robert Holmes and Philip Hinchcliffe took over fully on the next story, The Ark in Space, and obviously led to a quite a renaissance in uh, Doctor Who. It is actually considered um, the first three seasons of Tom Baker's reign, quite a, a golden age of uh, shows. And obviously this comes from the first series, Tom Baker's first series, which is available here, season 12, the collection, and you had like I say, you've got the giant robot there, you've got the Wirren from Ark in Space, you've got the Santarans from the Santaran experiment, you then have the Daleks from Genesis of Daleks, which was the first story that featured Davros as the creator of the Daleks, and then the uh, the final story of the season, Revenge of the Cybermen, which saw the Cybermen return uh, after a gap of about six years. They hadn't been seen since the end of uh, Patrick Troughton's era in 1969. Uh, John Pertwee, the third Doctor, never met the Cybermen um, officially on screen at all. So, yeah, so this is available from stores. It's a cracking season. Um, the only outlier is is really this opening story, which um, probably, you know, I, I don't like to label stories worse or, or bad or anything, but it's probably the least uh, story of um, season 12. Uh, just because it's probably it comes across more as a, a like a, a Pertwee uh, third Doctor tale than an actual fourth Doctor, and you can see that Tom Baker is very much still trying to find his feet in the role in those opening episodes. But the packaging is obviously standard packaging. There we've got the limited edition uh, gold uh, sticker on there. Robot nineteen seventy four collector figure set five point five inch collector series. And then we've got, on the back, a description, a complete plop synopsis of what actually happens in the story if you haven't seen it. So there's spoilers for you. Uh, and I noticed all the ones that they had in the my local store all had security stickers on. Um, so I think they've probably had a bit of an issue with shoplifters. Because um, it's unusual for toys like this to have a security sticker on. I just hope that that comes off. Uh, nicely and doesn't damage in the packaging because uh, I do like to keep things in box. Standard Doctor Who uh, current logo, a nice image of the police box. But without further ado, let's get the figure set open and have a closer look. Uh, just a brief description of what the uh, inner packaging is. Again, uh, the cardboard insert is a little photograph of one of the sets from the story itself. This, I think, is the outside of the think tank. Uh, laboratories where the K1 robot is stored. As you can see there, it's got a sign on saying keep out, bit of brickwork, and then you can kind of like see the doors 
uh, going in there. So a nice little bit of a uh, photographic uh, insert if you wanted to have that as a, a diorama for your figures. So the first thing to notice really is uh, some subtle differences in the um, figures. Um, as character always like to do when they're re-releasing these figures. Um, there'll be a better comparison when I showed the original figures here. But this guy was originally released as a builder figure, which came in the first classic wave, which included the fourth Doctor as played by Tom Baker. So the wave of eight figures um, all came with an individual piece of the giant robot, and then you collected the whole wave and you put them all together. So the other figures in the wave were the fifth Doctor, played by Peter Davison, the Sixth Doctor, played by Colin Baker, a SV7 and D84, Vok Robots from the Robots of Death, Magnus Greel and Mr. Sin Twin Pack from the Talons of Wang Chang, a Zygon from the Terror of the Zygons, and also a Sea Devil from the John Pertwee story, The Sea Devils. When I got the original wave here, so there you go, you can see this guy here. Now, I absolutely love this design. Uh, I think he's absolutely amazing. I'm not a big fan of the story. Like I said, the story is very slight. Um, it's not the best opening story uh, for a doctor, um, but this design was absolutely amazing. And um, all I can suggest, say is that the reason why I hold this uh, design so dear, like to my kind of Doctor Who fan, Heart is because um, back in the 1970s when Dennis Fisher did the action figure range, uh, they did a giant robot figure, which was considerably bigger than uh, this was. I think he came up to about there because uh, they were Mego style figures, so they're about in the uh, eight inch scale. And uh, yes, I had a Tom Baker, fourth Doctor, Dennis Fisher's action figure. I had the Cyberman. I had a Palatoy talking Dalek and a Palatoy talking K9. I had the TARDIS. Uh, and I always asked for the giant robot. And um, either he was extremely rare to get hold of, or it's one of those things where your parents um, don't quite listen and instead buy you some more Star Wars toys. So I never got him. So when the character released this version, I was absolutely adamant that I was going to get this... Um, Version and I actually ordered the full wave directly from character options. So we'll do a proper comparison now as we get the new version out of the packaging. And here we have the two K1 robots uh, next to each other. And as you can see, there are subtle differences. Um, as you saw from the clip at the beginning of the video uh, where I over put the titles, hopefully. I didn't get copyright straight. Um, the colours on the re-release are more accurate. Uh, it was more a purpley pink um, uh, perspex glass, whatever they used on the head and also on the shoulders than uh, the original release, which as you can see is more uh, of a red colour. So that is more accurate to how the prop was. And there are some subtle differences in the accuracy as well. Um, I will just come up and show you. Now, as you can see, there is a metal mesh on the original version there. Now, that metal mesh is where actor Michael Kelgariff could actually see. Because, obviously, he's a tall bloke, uh, but he wasn't that tall. Um, so that is the metal mesh that he actually saw when he was um, acting in the costume. Now, in some instances in the story, it was a darker mesh. So it was a bit of a variant. They have actually put that darker mesh on there. And also, as you can see from the collar as well, the collar is silver on here, on the original version. And the collar is more of a opaque kind of uh, greeny grey there. Now again, that was accurate to how uh, the prop appeared in certain scenes where they hadn't quite finished it off. So only, um, you know, tiny subtle differences, 
but these obviously make it worthwhile to uh, you know Doctor Who collectors out there who obviously want a more accurate or perhaps a slightly different version um, you know character to their due could have just re-released this one uh, without any subtle differences um, but they haven't you know they've decided to look at it and you know in some instances they've just slightly improved it as you can see um, there are a difference in the waist as well now, as you can see, there's a slight bow there in the waist of the re-release, and there isn't on that one. Now, that's actually my fault, because when I was putting this together as a build-a-figure, I actually put his waist on the wrong way round. Uh, I didn't actually realise it should have gone on that way. And once you've clicked this build-a-figure into place, it's very, very difficult to get him out again. So I, I was always kind of like, ah, oh, well, you know, no one's really going to notice. But obviously, now that they've re-released the figure, you can actually notice that uh, I did actually put it on the wrong way around originally. Now let's just have a look at the rear of the giant robot. Okay, as you can see, not really much of a difference there. Um, just some subtle differences with the nuts and bolts. Uh, they have been kind of moved and, and moved around. That one's obviously different to the re-release. The black bolt is in a different place. Uh, I think that's obviously, again, making it more screen accurate to how the prop and the costume originally appeared and one other subtle difference that i've just noticed on the prop is as you can see this kind of like um thing in the middle here um is it's all silver on that one and as you can see on there you've actually got a clear perspex on the top there and then it becomes silver and then obviously has the clear perspex lines there so Again, uh, another slight variation on how the action figures differ. Now, the disintegrator gun, obviously this uh, comes free. So, as you can see there, oh, I've actually had him carrying it the wrong way around all this time. <laughs> Who knew? Who knew? Well, let's just have a quick look. On the differences there. Yeah, not really much much of a difference on that. Doesn't look like the paint jobs are much different either. As you can see there. So not much change on that at all. But all in all, if you missed out on this figure and that wave that first classics wave was quite notorious to get hold of. It was the, probably the only classics wave that actually went full retail into um, supermarkets and toy stores before the classic range then went um, more or less exclusive to um, Forbidden Planet and uh, other stores, Toys R Us exclusively. Um, so a lot of people missed out on this original release. So it is good that character have decided to re-release it, it gives you the opportunity to pick it up and I would say purely for uh, the price point £20 for this figure alone would be uh, an absolute bargain but the fact that you're getting a fourth Doctor figure in there as well for £19.99 is again um, more value for money the only thing I, will, I have noticed since taking this guy out is his waist is extremely wobbly um, so I don't know if that's just mine or I don't know if that's an actual issue with the figures in general but um, hopefully I'll be able to keep him stood up in most places so there you go let's put him there and then let's have a comparison of the fourth Doctor figures
Now here we have the fourth Doctor figure that comes with this set and it is based on his season 12 appearance and he does have a hat <laughs> for all you Simpsons fans out there who uh, uh, know what I'm talking about. So it's a brand new figure with a hat. Yay! Um, and there's some uh, subtle differences in the paint job. So I'll just bring in the original figure that was released in 2008. Now, as you can see, quite a few differences. Um, so what we have here is we have a serious hatted uh, fourth doctor, which I think is the first time he's ever been in the series 12 get up with that particular head. As previously we got this version, which was Tom with a big smiley grin. And he did come with a serious like head uh, but it was without the hat, uh, so you could do the head swap on there. Now, obviously, one of the major differences is the uh, colour of the jacket. This is more screen accurate. Uh, it was actually more of a lighter red uh, than uh, this version. And the hat is also more accurately, uh, it was a lighter brown uh, with the black Dana there and also you've then got a more accurate paint job on the neck tie and then a more accurate uh, paint job on the actual uh, jumper kind of like waistcoat uh, I think it was more like a cardigan really uh, that he had underneath there and then one other thing that is of notice the scarf is virtually the same the same paint job some differences on the top there but there are virtually the same kind of um, paint job on the scarf so the scarf is virtually accurate to how it appeared however if you look at the trousers uh, they're just plain grey here on the original version but if you look in here there are speckled grey now again that is more accurate to how he appeared uh, in the show in season 12 so there's nothing wrong with this version this version sat on my shelf for for what well, since 2008 uh, so you know it's a great version of the doctor but i really do like what they've done here with this version you know these re-releases -re give character an opportunity to you know perhaps fix things that weren't quite right the first time and do subtle differences so they've even painted the gold buttons underneath on the jacket and as you can see there's the velvet piping on the the jacket pockets as well so it's a really nice addition so again it's that added incentive that if you've already got this figure and i do have this figure i think i've got this figure about several times over uh, that, you know, you can get this one because this one is, again, different and more accurate to how it appeared. There's no new, new sculpting, really, uh, on it at all. Uh, it is virtually just uh, repainted uh, more accurately to how it appeared. Again, added value. So, again, for those collectors who missed out on the giant robot, absolutely brilliant. And for those collectors who didn't, but then want this version, uh, you also get a better Season 12 Fourth Doctor. The Sonic Screwdriver is something that came with the original Doctor, uh, but it doesn't have that with this new version. So if you have got a handy one around, then there you go. You can picture him with it put it in his hand and there you go you've got the fourth doctor all ready to go now interestingly the costume designer who designed both the fourth doctor costume for season 12 and also the giant robot costume was a bbc costume designer called james Aitchison who then later went on to become an Oscar-winning costume designer for film. Uh, I think he won his first Oscar 
for Bernardo Bertolucci's The Last Emperor, I think in 1988. And he's also famously designed costumes for the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies. Uh, in particular, the very first Spider-Man movie where he designed the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man costume and also William Defoe's Green Goblin Power Rangers style costume, which uh, I've never been a fan of, but I actually had a bit of a nostalgic twinge for when uh, he turned up in the, the latest Spider-Man film. But there you go. So, you know, an Oscar-winning costume designer was responsible for both these designs and an excellent design they are too. It's a brilliant set. It's well worth the 1999 uh, that it is retailing for. Like I said, it's hitting B&M stores now. I was really surprised to find it earlier today. I wasn't expecting it to uh, be there. And uh, go hit your B&M stores right now to grab yourself an absolute bargain. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video, and if you did, then please leave us a like, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button, get us closer to that 1,000 subscribers mark that we've aimed as our target for 2022. Um, now, I've had to do a little bit of jiggery-pokery here, because um, this should be the 100th video. But the 100th video, I've got something very special planned, and I still wanted that to be the 100th video. And then, obviously, I saw that in the shop, I want to get a, a video out for that as soon as possible. So what I did actually do is uh, I deleted one of the old videos, which was, wasn't a review or anything. It was just me saying there's a Twitter poll to decide what the next video is. Uh, so it was only about two minutes long, and I just thought, well, that one can go by the by. It only had 44 views. Uh, it was a very early video. So I uh, deleted that one. So this is officially now the 99th video. And then the next video, our 100th video special, will be, um, well, I'm not going to tell you. It'll be a surprise. So stay tuned for that. And thank you once again for watching the channel. And again, take care, stay safe, and we'll see you soon on Be The Geek Toy Reviews. Bye now. See, there are differences in the neck tie. Uh, this one is more accurate to how it appeared in the show. And there are also... Oh, oh.